Good morning, everybody. Today we're talking about the last archetype of the list, the Blightcaster. That's right, we got Blightcaster here. Now, Blightcaster is super exciting because Druid's really good. Like I've talked about this before, Cold Druid being super good. If you've seen any of my live stream, people go, oh, hey, what should I try playing for game? The answer is Cold Druid. It's super good. In fact, if you're already interested right now, I'm going to leave a link just below for you so you can try Cold Druid yourself and see how crazy it is at Endgame. So then how does Blightcaster compare? If Cold Druid is this super stompy endgame monster that's tearing everybody apart, obviously Blightcaster has to be worse, right? So it is. But at the endgame. And by worse, I mean like marginally worse. Like it's probably like 15, maybe 20% less damage at the endgame, which still puts it really high on the tier of spellcasters, just like less than Cold Druid. Where Blightcaster is insane is during the leveling process. You see, at level 6, Blightcaster gets an ability called Death Eater. And what this does is every time you get a kill, you get your Wisdom as temporary hit points. Not your Wisdom modifier, your Wisdom score. So if you have 30 Wisdom at level 6, you get a kill, you get 30 temporary hit points. And this is a passive. It's active all of the time. You don't have to worry about pressing a button to get this happening or only casting certain spells. It just goes off. On top of that, it stacks up to three times when you first get it, four times at 12, and five times at 18. Now this might sound insanely overpowered. Well, at level 32, it's actually not that big of a deal. Just imagine hypothetically 100 wisdom. At level 32, you're gonna give yourself 500 temporary hit points after you get five kills. And honestly, that's not really that crazy. Rejuvenation Cocoon is 150 and that's in Primal Avatar and most druids are gonna have this. Shard Storm gives you temporary hit points equal to a quarter of your health. And heck, even regular Druid from Season's Herald gets eight times their wisdom as temporary hit points when they use Winter's Heart. So at endgame, this temporary hit point total is not really that crazy. But during the leveling process, oh, it's a different story. Essentially, as long as you're getting kills, your health is basically never going to go below maximum, and getting kills with this character is super easy. Because all of the Thorn spells, well not all of them, but most of them, have no saving throw. And that means, if you're starting a brand new character, you've got no items, you barely know how to play, guess what? You can just grab the spell-like abilities for Thorn Bolt and Splinter Bolt and throw them out at monsters with Maximize and Power and Quicken and just alternate between the two and you'll rip through quests, instantly kill Reapers because the spells have no save, and work your way through the game. So Death Eater makes this an incredibly smooth leveling experience, but it's not alone. You see, even though you have spells with no saves, and even though you have temporary hit points, you're still going to run into the problem of area of effect damage. And this is what regular druid struggles with the most. If you're trying to level a regular druid, they basically don't get any area of effect until level 7 when they get flame strike. But even then, it's not that great until they get firestorm, which I believe is level 13. So you're waiting a very long time before you get realistically any important or impactful area of effect on a regular druid. But Blightcaster has a new spell on the block. And by new spell, I mean old spell, Spike Growth. Now I know, before you turn off the video and think, Shrimp Tom, Spike Growth sucks. You're right, Spike Growth kind of used to suck. However, there's an ability in Blightcaster that makes your Spike Growth deal double damage, and another ability that makes your Spike Growth deal negative damage. Now usually a spell dealing negative damage is a problem. However, it's been tweaked so that it doesn't affect any undead creatures, which means it's just free damage for taking the enhancement. And as a result, Spike Growth literally one-shots every single pack of monsters. It's crazy. You just run through quests dropping Spike Growths like they're old school firewalls, and guess what? Every quest is an absolute breeze. Because your character deals physical damage, but magical physical damage, there's basically nothing that resists any of your spells at all. Oozes. Ghosts, golems, they all take full damage. You don't have to worry about trying to pick the right element. The only monsters in the entire game that are going to resist you at all are Stone Guard Champions. And even then, just cast a second spell and they're going to go down anyway. Now this might sound confusing. How would a golem res not resist you? Golems take half magic damage and even let's just say the physical doesn't, you know, somehow doesn't count as magic, uh, they still have damage reduction to non-adamantine effects. So I don't understand how you wouldn't you know, to have this be reduced. And it's really a quirk of the system. First, golems only take reduced damage from magical effects. They have magic resistance rating. As a result, the physical damage is unaffected. So in theory, the damage reduction should apply, just the flat damage reduction that every weapon user has to deal with. 
But no, because that only applies to attacks, which means you do full damage to golems. So while a regular druid would cower in fear at a golem dealing only fire or cold or whatever damage, you just obliterate everything. The end result is that the Blightcaster is this incredibly smooth leveling god, and you can do it right away with basically no items. At this point right now, I'm telling you, next Hardcore League, you're going to see a lot of Blightcasters day one, and you're going to see a lot of Dark Hunters day one, because both of those things are extremely useful for the early leveling process, and they just kind of destroy areas where you're not doing super high reapers, you don't need as much damage, and they're lower amounts of damage, but insane survivability will let them do whatever they want. So the question is, should you play a Blightcaster? I mean, yeah, it feels great. Realistically, Blightcaster has two drawbacks. The first is that they don't get any direct instant heals. They only get heal over time, which in Reaper mode is reduced a lot when you try to cast on yourself. Healing other people is perfectly fine. Lesser Vigor, Vigor, Greater Vigor, these spells are great when healing others. But when healing yourself in Reaper mode, the rounding of your self-healing reduction is not very kind and you usually get healed for one or two or three and it doesn't feel very good. However, once you get Death Eater, you don't even take damage anyway. You just have temporary hit points stacking up and stacking up and stacking up. So the trick is, if you're not comfortable doing Reaper, you don't have any gear to get started because your character is like brand new, just play on Elite difficulty until level 6, and then start smashing, smashing, smashing your way through Reapers. Now the second weakness of this character is, as I said, it doesn't do as much damage as the standard Cold Druid. And there's two reasons for this. Number one, of the endgame spells for this character, they just aren't as good. Yes, you get Tsunami, which is pretty good, and Rend the Soul, but it's difficult to be able to scale negative spell power because it's just some items you might not have, and a lot of monsters do happen to be immune to negative. Acid Well, pretty good spell that you get to pick up, does a ton amount of damage, so it's actually very good and still nice, but you do not get Ice Flowers, and Ice Flowers is a specific Cold Druid spell that only has a two second cooldown and does insane damage. You get Thorn Lance, which is not Ice Flowers. It's a nice spell, but it's not an Ice Flowers. So unfortunately you're missing there. And then the second half of this is that itemization plays a key factor into the different elements. When I played my Blightcaster, I played the Thorns exclusively during the leveling process. I went Thorn Kin into Thorn Knight and it was amazing and I blew my way through everybody. At level 20 though, I swapped fully out of the thorn stuff into the hive stuff and became a hive master. With the main reason being that the hive master gives you tons of acid bonuses and the acid spells are all over the place. You've got acid dragon breath, you've got shard storm, you can empower your ruin and greater ruin with acid damage. However, thorn has nothing. There's literally no thorn spells in epics. There's very few force abilities. In fact, I think the only one is that of Shadow Dancer, and this character makes a terrible Shadow Dancer. So you want to use Thorn stuff in Heroics, and you want to use the Hive stuff and the Acid in Epics. Hit him with the Acid, hit him with the Poison. Very, very powerful stuff. But there's your contrast. The Acid damage versus the Cold damage of a regular Cold Druid. When it comes to itemization, there just happens to be more Cold items in the game than Acid that are easier to access. But two big standouts. The first is the Frozen Wanderer Filigree set, giving an extra 5% cold critical over any other element, which means you just have 5% more cold critical. It's the reason why all the best builds, Sorcerer, Druid, and Alchemist, are cold builds. 5% more crit is 5% betterer than what you would get before. And there's no way to beat that until they make some type of new filigree set, uh, you know, that does like extra 5% acid crit or extra 5% fire crit. Cold is just going to be the best one for a long time. But that's one half of the story. The other half is the item Reflection of Wave, which is something specific to the Sorcerer and the Druid, which is a quarter staff that when you use it, it gives you a whole bunch of increased maximum caster level for your cold spells, making them even more potent. You have to be in an elemental form. You need the water elemental form, which is why you can't use this both with the Blightcaster, who doesn't get it, or with the Alchemist. So while Cold Alchemist is very strong, it is missing out a little bit of that damage from not being an elemental. And so as a result, the Cold Druid just comes ahead in terms of endgame damage because it can scale all of this stuff, whereas the Blightcaster can't. However, Blightcaster is super amazing for leveling. 
and feels a million times better during the leveling process. I cannot stress how much better Blightcaster feels. Now, if you're starting as an iconic, you know, you're gonna do like four, or like 19 Druid, one whatever, cause you're doing like a purple dragon nightlife. So maybe you do like one fighter, 19 Druid, you start at level 15. Sure, regular Druid's gonna feel perfectly fine cause you're already starting at the high levels. You're skipping all the low level areas where you don't have any area of effect. You can get your ice flowers almost right away at level 16 and just start blasting your way through content. But if you wanna play a new Druid today, Blightcaster is is fantastic if you're doing those past lives you're just generally leveling you want to do racial lives or if when your ideal end game is no more than reaper 7 blightcaster is going to feel absolutely amazing an important note it still performs well in an r10 scenario it's just not as good so still good just not as good but the abilities look cool high form looks dope and you get evasion so i don't really have a lot of bad things to say about it However, that's all my jibber jabber. If you want to build one of your own, stay tuned to me with the build. If you want to be the best Blightcaster you can be, then look no further than Blightcaster right here. Now, of course, as a Blightcaster, your most important stat is the Wisdom stat. It's all your spell casts that go into this. It's the only one that really matters. Outside of that, Constitution's important. Strength, Dex, Intelligence, Charisma, useless. You don't need them. And one of the best parts about being a Blightcaster is your reflex saves are actually not that bad because you actually get half of your Blightcaster level as a as reflex saves when you're in this high form. Now there's multiple forms, so I'm going to quickly kind of describe what I went through here on this character. If I just look under Druid Feats, you have all of the wild shapes. Specifically, I have the Hive Master and the Thorn Knight. Uh, now these two shapes have different purposes. In Heroics, I used Thornkin and Thorn Knight and cast all of the Thorn spells. Thorn Bolt, Splinter Bolt, Thorn Bloom, and they just rip through everything. Most of them have no save, and they do a super high amount of damage while having also very low spell cost. And because they're physical, they're pretty much non-resisted. They're awesome, they have great range, and it was great. However, once you get to Epics, there's like literally no spells that work with this. There's no Thorn spells that function with Thorn Knight, unfortunately. But there are tons of acid spells. Uh, pretty much everything in Prime Levitar. You have the Draconic Incarnation, uh, Dragon Breath. Lots of acid abilities on top of being able to pick up acid well. It's really, really strong. So 1 to 20 was Thornkin and Thorn Knight. And then at 20, I just swapped into the Hive Master form instead and ran Hive Master from 20 all the way up to level 30. It was super fast, super easy. Acid well just starts clearing out packs. And it felt really great. As far as your skills go, you don't really need any of them. Heal and Spellcraft are the only ones you need. Everything else is superfluous. Concentration? Sure. Now you don't get knocked out of spells. Use Magic Device? Sure. Maybe you want to have access to, like, Raise Dead. I don't know. You can still cast uh, Reincarnate, so you don't actually need this at all. Uh, in fact, I don't even know why I use, use Magic Device. I didn't use a single Magic Device my entire time while I leveled. So, again, most of these uh, skills don't matter, and you don't need to care. As far as the spells go, you get like a million of them and you get to take all of the good ones. So again, Thorn Strike, great. Splinter Bolt, really great. Thorn Bloom, really great. Thorn Wave, if it has the word Thorn in it, you should take it. Grasping Thorns, amazingly good spell. Thorn Lance, you, do you get what's going on here? I want to put out a uh, shout out to a couple spells that are quite good during the leveling process. We got Contagion. Contagion was changed, so then now it only has three spells in here. One of them is a stun, and one of them is a damage. I use them interchangeably. The stun is really good for just stunning stuff in the early game, but so is the instantaneous damage, especially once you get one of the effects we're going to talk about in a little bit that lets it spread. And then there's also Spike Growth. This spell is the bread and butter. You get this at level 5, and when you have this at level 5, you will also have an ability called Every Rose Has Its Thorn that says uh, when you cast Spike Growth spell, it does double damage. On top of that, you also get this effect, Defiled Growth, that makes your Spike Growth also deal negative damage. As a result, your Spike Growth does so much damage, you don't need to cast any other spells through the entire leveling process. You walk into a room, you cast Spike Growth, all the monsters instantly uh, die, and if they're not instantly died, they die the almost DLS immediate time. after that. And I forgot to mute that, so mute. There we go. Thanks for the resub, by the way. Um, so I forgot to mute that. Uh, you're banned. Uh, anyway. So it's super powerful for the leveling process, super good, uh, and everything is great there. Uh, other than that, you just kind of take regular druid spells, heal spells, you got the heal spells here, you got everything else. Um, so you don't really need to worry about anything super magical. Uh, level 9, Tsunami, Acid Well, billion damage, billion damage, super strong. Finger of Death, you got Necromancy DCs. Whale of Banshee, you got Necromancy DCs. It all just kind of comes together. 
So let's talk enhancements. What's good, what's bad, and why didn't I take any of the spell-like abilities? I actually did take the spell-like abilities during the leveling process. I used this one, so I used the Thorn spell-like ability here for Thorn Bolt, as well as Splinter Bolt. And those are the only two things that I took. Uh, I didn't use any other spell-like abilities. The, there's actually a big reason for this. I find these ones are too expensive. Enveloping Swarm is not a good spell, so I just don't take it anyway. Here, the Acid Rain and the Thorn Bloom, I found I actually didn't need to use spell-like ability Thorn Bloom because I would just cast it and it would do a good amount of damage regularly. And then the Grasping Thorns, again, you don't need to cast Grasping Thorns this often, so I don't know why I would have the spell-like ability. So I actually did have the six points here for the two spell-like abilities. They saved me all my spell points through the entire game and made it super duper easy to level, where basically I would just run into a room, spike growth, and if anything was still alive, hit him with the spell-like abilities. This costs one and this costs two, so you could never really run out of spell points and it was super strong. And then Season's Herald. Now Season's Herald, I don't really care too much about Sunburst or Storm of Vengeance. These things you don't really need here. They're not that important. But getting the, uh, in Heroics, using Child of Summer to get extra universal spell power, the extra cash levels and the maximum cash levels for your healing spells as well as your Thorn spells is great. And then in Epics, you use Elder of Winter instead to get the Acid effect and you can get all of the extra crit chance here. As a result, you get 8% crit chance out of Season's Herald and 4% out of Blightcaster for a total of 12% crit chance for all of your relevant spells that you cast, which is super duper huge. And I love that. If you have extra points left over, you can dump them in your Racial Tree, you can dump them in Fade Arc Illusionist, you can dump them really wherever you want. Uh, I wouldn't recommend Nature's Warrior that much because it's not super defensive. A one-pointer here for eight hit points is not the worst because it's a pretty good one-pointer, but outside of that, again, not really crazy. Some options some people were doing is they were using Falconry and they were grabbing the Raven and then they were using the Unkindness of Ravens. I found this ability really clunky and I didn't personally like it, uh, but you may like it more than me. Now, I did say I wanted to clarify one thing with Contagion and that is this ability, Outbreak. So it says your Contagion and Insidious Spores also apply to enemies near your target. So Insidious Spores is a level seven spell that is terrible. This spell is garbage, don't take it ever. I wanted to be here so I could tell you how bad the spell is. Garbage, awful, atrocious, useless. But Contagion is a stun or a damage over time. Now, if you get this, you can get this effect by level three. With Contagion, that means that your character now has an AoE stun like Sunburst or an AoE damage over time. So you can then, because Contagion only costs eight mana total, you can walk into a room with a little bit of acid spell power, cast Contagion as the damage over time, it hits everything, and all of a sudden you're melting an entire pack of kobolds for eight mana. And you can keep doing that again and again because the cooldown on this is very, very short. So pretty useful there. I did unspec it once I got to Epics because I never used it, excuse me, in Epics pretty much at all. The other thing I wanted to draw attention to is this ability here, Death Eater. This is what makes this character so, so, so good to level. It's not just because you get the spike growth that makes it free for leveling, but also Death Eater makes it every time you get a kill, you get to add your wisdom as temporary hit points. This number, right? Not the mod, this number. And so my wisdom being 57 is a lot right now, but when you get this at level six, you're gonna have like somewhere between 24 and 30 wisdom, somewhere around there. If Let's go on the lower end, 24. One kill, 24 temporary hit points. Two kills, 48 temporary hit points. Three kills, 72 temporary hit points. And every time you get a kill, you go back up to 72. So monsters have to do 72 damage to you before you get a kill, or else you go back up to 72 temporary hit points. Which means you're basically completely immune during the leveling process. Um, it's great. Then you get another stack at 12 and another stack at 18. Is this overpowered? No, it's not. Uh, for endgame, this will total out to, if you have 100 wisdom, 500 temporary hit points, and temporary hit points, it's not that much. Uh, you can get way more temporary hit points than 500, so this is not really a big deal. But during the leveling process, oh, ho, ho, that's where it matters a lot more. So as I said, very cool effect. Death Eater, super cool. Get this as soon as you can. Um, I wouldn't recommend dumping all your points into Blightcaster, but you want to put some into Season's Herald, kind of go back and forth between the two. Um, the way that I did it is I went into Blightcaster to make sure I had every rose has its thorn and defiled growth by level uh, five. So I could then blast out just those um, thorn spike growths or whatever. And then I went into Season's Herald and picked up Elder of Winter. And then I went back and filled up Blightcaster. Not because I wanted to use Elder of Winter, I was still Elder of Summer, but I wanted the plus one cash level for my spells, which was pretty useful because increasing the cash level means you just deal more damage, which is pretty good. And then finally, let's talk about Epic Destinies. There's nothing really to write home about here. I didn't even spend the rest of my points, but basically, Primal Avatar, 
because uh, Shard Storm is insane with this character because it's acid and poison. That's literally all you do. Uh, the Mantle, again, insane because it's literally all the spells that you do. Gives you infinity mana with Evergreen, which is why you have your Mantle. You have a chance to get temporary spell points and you get a lot of temporary spell points. It goes off all the time. And then Draconic Incarnation because Dragon Breath is the best spell. So you just take Dragon Breath and then you get Gaping Masa does double damage and you hit people for 20,000 damage with Dragon Breath before you even hit level 32. It's very cool. I also used Fate Singer because I wanted the mana cost reduction with 10% mana cost reduction here and then 15% here and another 10% item and 10% from uh, leveling. That's at 45% reduced cost of spells. With Evergreen means you're pretty much uh, good in terms of never running out of spell points, although you would still want to take some of the effects like the improved meta magics up here, which I would be taking as I go further, and using tier 5. I forgot to mention this character would take Ruin and Greater Ruin, which is why I actually did, because uh, you actually get a lot of force spell power into this build. Because Force is part of Cold, so as a Cold Druid, you actually get, or like not Cold, but out of Winter, you actually get a bunch of, uh, oh no, Force is Summer, isn't it? Oh, it's in both. It's in both Summer and Winter. So you get the extra Force spell power, you get the Force crit and the Force crit here. So my character ends up having a lot of Force crit and Acid at the same time, which means Ruin is super good because it scales off Force and Acid crit. And so you can ruin people for 100,000 damage. So yeah, very cool. And that is pretty much how I built this character. I'd love to go over the items, but the items are really straightforward. Get yourself some um, impulse items. So, you know, for I've got like a scepter of impulse here. I got acid. Um, for heroics, you want impulse, 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 as well as some healing. So devotion spell power. And for epics, it's acid and uh, acid and impulse, as well as a little bit of cold because you do still cast tsunami. Um, and devotion because you still want to heal yourself. I don't think I actually have a devotion item on. I do have the silver thread belt. Nice. Level 32. Oh, yeah. But anyways, this is how you play yourself a blight cast. So if you want to be out there blighting and casting, please give it a shot. Remember, thorns in heroics, 1 to 20, and then hive master, 20 to 30, and you'll be very happy with yourself. That's all I have for you today. If you like what you saw, make sure you follow that subscribe button and like a like. Thanks. Appreciate it. Have a nice time. Bye-bye. I'm going to disappear into a void as the screen fades out. Ooh.